Welcome back, young adventurers, to the Revenge of the Rainbow Dragons. As per our last poll, most people have voted to messing around with the magic stones and see if they work. And because, as we've kind of established, uh, fuck Fox, We're, who wants to hang out with them? So, 66% of the people vote for the stones, which is the, uh, not as overwhelming as the previous choices, because they are magic, we could screw it up, but this is what we voted for, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that said, I got sick or something, I don't know what, so my voice is a little messed up, so if it sounds off or weird to you, that's why I apologize. Or maybe it sounds better, I don't know, maybe you like it more. So, I'll do my best. <clears throat> May I see the stones, Nesbit? You ask gently. Maybe new eyes will be able to unravel their secret. Reluctantly, Nesbit hands them to you. Holding them up to the faint light of the broken cord, you notice that each stone has a different color on each of its many sides. What do you make of this, Owl? It appears to be a code, answers Owl. Perhaps if the colors were matched up to each other, their meaning would become clear. Colors? What colors? asks Nesbit, pushing his face close to the stones. I can't see them. Long ago there used to be colors, but they disappeared. No, Nesbit, you say kindly. The colors are here, idiot. Living so long in the dark has probably hurt your vision. Perhaps you're right, Owl. If we match the colors that are the same, you try many different combinations, but nothing happens. You study the stones, hoping to discover what they're... You, you, sorry. You study the stones, hoping to discover what their maker might have meant. You empty your mind and drift, becoming one with the stones. Blankness. Thickness. <laughs> Thanks, Internet. Images of rainbow colors, understanding, coming back, being, comments. Please subscribe. I understand. You say quietly, and picking up your stones, you fit them together in a way that you know is right. Quickly, gather together, you tell everyone as the stones cast a circle of brilliant color and begin to hum. Pressing close together. Oh, okay. Pressing close together, your group kneels around the shining circle of stones. A strange feeling comes over you, tingling, whispery. Looking down, you give a sharp cry. Your feet and legs are gone! Most of Fox and Owl are gone! Alarmed, you tug at your hand, held firmly by Nesbit. Do not break the connection, warns the old man. We're not going back. Trust the stones. They will not harm you. The nothingness creeps farther up to your body. You close your eyes and try to trust. And then there's a time of whirling nothingness, a rainbow arch, and a terrible sense of tearing. Where are we, you ask, pressing your hands to your aching head. Oh, no look now, but we're back, warns Fox. Opening your eyes, you look straight into the angry eyes of malice. Where did you come from? He asks angrily, poking you with a knobby finger. And who's this hairy old man? His name's Nesbit. I found him in your wonderful game room. He says the Rainbow Dragons told him to wait for me there. And he gave me this. You hold up the key. It glows and pulses in your hand. It's the key, whispers Melus, his eyes wide. Then he cl calms himself and says, I see you have found our key. <laughs> it was really a test. We sent you to the game room to see if you could find it for us. You passed the test. You can give it to me for now. Don't trust him, kid, whispers Fox. Where is Pentagon, chirps Owl. Is this outside? I remember it being brighter, says Nesbit. Where's Pentagon, you demand, holding the key behind your back. Don't worry about him. He's finished. Just to give us the key demands Ru Rubus? Oh, I guess Rubus is there too. Okay. Oh, there's a lot here. Suddenly, you notice that all three wizards hold magical amulets in their hands. You cheated, you shout. You said no magical devices were allowed. Where's Pentacarn? What have you done with them? Give us the key, and we'll give you your precious Pentagon. Snarls Malice. I'm getting my voices all mixed up. Whatever. Here's your old key. I don't want it. 
You cry, throwing the key across the room. I hate it when the dungeon master uses cutscenes. All three wizards throw themselves upon it. Mine, cries Pothos. Next hot first. Mine, I am the oldest, screams Rubus. It's mine, I am the best, hollers Malice. As you watch, all three wizards grasp the key at the same time. Instantly, there is a deafening noise and a bright flash, and you are thrown to the floor. Picking yourself up, you look for the wizards and the key. You see the sparkling key on the floor. Next to it sits a large, fat toad, eyes bulging with alarm. A long, slender black snake is draped over the toad's head. At that moment, the toad and the snake spot an ugly, furry black spider crawling across the floor. There's a frantic hopping and a slithering as both creatures chase the spider through the open doors and out of your sight. Confused and frightened, you hurry to Pentagon's side. Pentagon is here too. Pentagon, wake up! I'm not dead yet, comments. You don't have to shout, but I have felt better. Staggering to his feet, the old wizard tries to focus his eyes. Where are they? They tricked me. Don't worry, Pentagon, they're gone. I think they changed into a toad, a snake, and a spider. Turning, you pick up the key. This had something to do with it. Drop it! Pentagon cries, slapping frantically at your hand. It's all right, you say. I've held it before and nothing happened to me. I got it from Nesbit here, who says that a bunch of dragons told him that a long time ago to give it to me. Isn't that right, Nesbit? What? What? Yes, that's right. Cobalt, the king of the rainbow dragons, gave it to me. He said that when you came, you would know how to use it. It's the key to the kingdom, comments, says Pentagon with awe in his voice. Once long ago, the kingdom was united under King Chromos and the Rainbow Dragons. Life was more beautiful than you could ever imagine. But the keepers grew old, and they knew an heir must be found. Someone worthy, oh, excuse me, someone worthy to carry on in place of Chromos. The test they devised was simple. You had to pick up the key and hold it, if you could. Many tried. Those who were evil and unworthy were changed forever, that which they most resembled in life. If you were good but not worthy, you received a powerful shock. I was one of those, and I still bear this scar. Before Kromos died, he decided that no one yet alive was worthy to hold the key. And then Cobalt gave the key to me, interrupts Nesbit, and told me to wait until you came for it. Those rainbow dragons who were left in the castle came out and flew away. The sky glowed with their colors, and then they were gone and everything turned gray. Once they were gone, evil entered the land, continues Pentagon. But what does it mean, you ask, looking at the rainbow-colored key? It means... Oh, sorry. It means that you are the ruler of the land now, explains Nesbitt patiently. Whoever holds the key to the kingdom is the king. Evil will flee before you, and goodness will return to the land. And best of all, the dragons will come back. That's enough jabbering. Isn't there something called food, grumbles Nesbitt. As your first act as ruler of the Rainbow Kingdom, how about bringing me some? But before you can reply, a wondrous thing happens. The ugly gray walls seem to quiver and slowly begin to change colors. First beige, blue, purple, all the joyous colors of the spectrum, until they become a glorious shimmer of every happy color in the world. As you stare in wonder, the sound of wings beating in the air fills your ears. Looking upward in excitement, you see the first of the Rainbow Dragons coming home. The end. Did we just win? We, uh, comments, you won! <laughs> you made all the correct decisions in such a way that land was restored. Sadly, no actual revenge happened from the Rainbow Dragons. They just kind of came home to chill out with you as the new ruler. But you did it. We didn't die. And uh, you, you, you made it, so uh, good job, I guess. You guys did it. Wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. I thought this would go maybe three episodes and we'd all just die. But now I'm really curious. I mean, real quick, I just want to see what would happen if uh, 
we kept following the cord like Fox asked. Let me just look real quick. Uh. And uh, just. Ah, it looks like it just kind of keeps going for a while. Dang. So. It does seem like this ended a little bit prematurely, but not in a negative way because we ended up winning. So, well done everyone. That was the Revenge of the Rainbow Dragons. Uh, this, I know this is kind of a silly series, but I hope you enjoyed it as we all kind of played D&D together. Sorry about that DM rail railroading cutscene at the end there where you just kind of won. But uh, dang, there you go. So yeah, this is just a silly book that I thought we could do. I thought it'd be a fun series. Thanks for everyone who participated in it. I really appreciate that. Maybe I could find one that's a little more, um, maybe I'll write my own for next year. And we could do one that's more involved and actually requires a character with dice rolls and the like. That'd be more interesting, wouldn't it? Maybe next year for next year in December. But oh, hey, since we won, it's a Christmas miracle. We did it. Happy in December, everyone. I appreciate it. Be sure to check out all the other D&D Summer videos. Subscribe, comments, please comments please subscribe you did it you level two wizard who hates fox thank you guys so much